Hello and welcome to the Lee Stafford Education Online Masterclass. I'm your host again, Lee Stafford, and today we have got a very, very special guest. This gentleman I have worked with for many years now. Um, he's an award-winning stylist, salon owner. Um, he's a private educator, a TV star, uh, and a very, very special staff as well. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce to you the one and only Martin Holmes. Oh, hello. Hello, Lee. How are you? Nice I'm to see right, you. Buddy. You're thank, right? thank you for such a wonderful introduction. That was wonderful. I really yeah, appreciate welcome, it. You're welcome, mate. Um, right, guys. Hello, everybody. I mean, where else would you be on this beautiful, dark, wet, miserable day that inside learning something new? What about that, eh? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So... Today's masterclass is going to be a variation of using the vintage tong technique. Yep. Uh, so in, in the recipe uh, that we use uh, for vintage tong, it's based on the 1940s Hollywood movie star type look. You know, that real long, flowing, lovely finger waves. That's how you, you get that, uh, that beautiful look by using a vintage tongue. Now, a little while ago, not long ago, a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, I was asked by a client who was going to a special party. She bought a special dress and she said to me, can you make me look like I'm coming out of the 1930s? However, I want you to put a slight modern twist. I don't want it to be exactly the same. I'd like you to do something a little bit different. So I thought about it. She had very long hair. Uh, so I thought, OK, if I use the vintage tong um, technique to get my finger waves, the rest of the hair I can put up or put down into a low chignon or something like that. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today is a 1930s inspired finger waves with a low chignon. Um, and the way to do that is by using a vintage tong technique. So I'll go straight into the uh, sectioning pattern now. This is my lovely little model, Louisa, as you can see. I'm just going to let this one piece down because I've got this section through the middle. I've got this section through the middle. <laughs> this is literally an inch and a half wide. So I took a centre parting and I took about three quarters of an inch either side to the top of the head, squared it off and straight down to the front. And is that, where is that at the end, uh, Mark, at the back there? Is it to the crown or below the crown? Where it's right, it? no, it's not. I'll show you one second. It's actually here. So it's just on the crown kind of. Right at the top of the head. Right at the top of the head. Yeah, the high point, the high point. The highest point, yeah. Gotcha. So it's basically an oblong shape to the front. Like that, if you can see that, okay. So that's the first section that I took. The rest of the hair, I'm just going to kick this out away from it. The rest of the hair, I've then pulled into a really nice, clean, low ponytail. And we're going to deal with this in a little while, okay? So you can see what I've done. I've, I've just pulled nice. everything back nice and clean, nice and low. I've used the old technique of uh, a, a hair grip and elastic band, two hair grips, put one in, wrapped it round, put the other one in, and bang, you've got an instant ponytail, okay? Nice and tight. It's not going to come out. Um, it's nice and clean. I use a little bit of um, hairspray just to... Get all the hair nice and flat. I use the uh, flexible hold, which I'm using pretty much throughout the whole technique. Right, how important is it to get that ponytail as clean as that at the beginning? Well, I think it's very important because at the end of the day, if you want to keep it clean, you need it tight. If you want to distress it afterwards, that's easy. But if you want mm -hmm. to keep it clean, I mean, if you start playing around and you pull bits out, it's very hard to put them back in unless you've got it nice and clean, nice and tight. Um, but what I want to say before I go on and start the technique is, you know, one of my very first mentors back in my early days of hairdressing, and it was hairdressing, 
you know, before we did anything, it was learning how to put rollers in, how to do finger waves, all sorts of things. This lady always said to me, and I, I remember it so vividly, and it stuck with me, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. It's as simple as that. So my preparation for this was it's been washed. I've used some volumizing mousse, not a lot, just a little bit. I've worked that through with a comb, and then I've blow dried it through nice and straight, nice and clean, nice and shiny. And what this does, it gives me a bit of grip, it gives me support, um, and it gives a bit of hold while I'm, while I'm working with the hair, especially this bit here, okay? So that's really important. Make sure you prepare properly. So what we've got, we've got a section through the middle, nice and simple. We've got our ponytail pulled nice and tight, nice and low at the back, and we're gonna deal with this in a little while. So the first thing we need to do is do our vintage tom technique. Now that's the only way, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only way to really get a true vintage finger wave, okay? And I, I was asked to get a 1930s look. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work from the crown to the front with my vintage tom technique. I'm gonna probably do this in about eight sections. And that's all you need, okay? And then once that's done, once that's cool in, I should deal with the ponytail. By the time I've finished that, this will be ready to brush out. I'll finger wave it and bob your uncle, okay? If you've got any questions, please ask. So I'm gonna crack on yes, with this no technique. Such, no such thing as a silly question, guys. If you've got any questions for Martin, um, about the, the hairstyle you're seeing Martin do. Martin did the original vintage tong recipe. Um, so Martin's a real expert in this kind of work. Um, any questions whatsoever, guys, like normal about your career? It can be uh, about um, your training. Um, this is the perfect time to ask any questions. So please fire away. We won't, we won't make you feel silly for any questions that you ask. So please keep them coming, guys. Okay, so my first section, I've just sprayed a little bit of Lee's uh, Flexible Holes hairspray just to help me control it. If you notice, I brought my model forward. It's just easier to get to. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be bringing every section forward, okay? So the old technique, you've got your clamp. Where are we? There we are. I'm going to go straight in. And I'm just going to clamp that. And just work it up a little bit, put a little bit of bend in the, into the root. Now I'm going to pull myself out enough distance to get a 360 degree turn. Okay, so pull my, going to grab my tail, pull it to the left, at the same time, completely turn the toes 360. So now we've got this going in, around, and out through this, through the front there. Okay. Now what's really important is getting this root done. You know, you don't want a really back, big baggy root and a tight end. The idea is to get a consistent wave all the way through. So I'm going to work my way down. Work my way back up a little so bit. So Martin, what would be, so what would be the, the benefit or the advantage of doing it like this rather than just taking your tongue right to the top and winding it down from the top to the bottom? Well, I think, to be honest with you, the consistency could vary on the way you, you wind it. Uh, you might get the ends not quite as tucked in as you want, you know, because these, these, these tongs are hot. And to hold that on the very end, you might burn yourself. You might have a half inch of straightened end. You don't really want that. So by doing it this way, you're feeding it through all the way. It's, it's basically curling all of the hair and you've got no chance of burning yourself. And do you get more of a firm result at the root? Because I would imagine if yeah. you fold it from the top down, when you get to the bottom, there's a lot of hair on top of it. That's right, exactly. So if you notice, when I'm doing this, I bring it right down to the root. I actually feel it and make sure the heat's coming through. And there it is. I can feel that heat coming through. Mm. So I know that that, you know, the root area is nice and hot and nice and set. So again, Using the, the, uh, the clamp, I'm just releasing the hair a little bit. Again, you need enough distance to be able to turn. So you watch how it goes, okay? So now I'm coming back to the left-hand side. And I'm looking for that, I'm just sorry, I'm just looking for this tail to always be in the middle. 
So every time you take a section, uh, every time you take a turn rather, the tail has to go at either side. And that way it stays in the middle. Otherwise, if you keep it on one side, you'll end up a bit more spirally. And it won't be quite as consistent for doing your finger waves. Maybe when you do the next section, Mark, we could do it from a different direction so we could see what you mean by that little tail. Okay, that little bit. Bit. Yeah, no problem. We've I'll got just... a lot. We've got a lot of questions here, Mark. We've got a lot of good morning, Bon. How you doing, buddy? Um, Tracy you says doing? hello from Chichester. Hello, Tracy. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, Lovely to hear from you. Jamie, Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee says hello. Laura, hi, hello, Laura. 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 We've got lovely. Amber. Oh, good morning, We've everybody. We've got Lisa hello. says hello. <laughs> And Tracy's got a question for you, Mark. She says, okay. where did you start with your hairdressing and how old were you when you started? Right, okay. So, first of all, I think it's important to know why I started my hairdressing. Um, one why second. did you start? I okay, one, second. That. one second, I just want to put this, this one in, right? So once I've done that, I'm just going to clamp it with a silver clip so it's out of the way. Where are we there? So it's there, okay? Very neat, Mark. Okay, sorry, she's leaning, isn't she? I'm gonna do my next section and I'll explain about my um, my background. So it's, I think it's quite interesting because when I, when I started wanting to be a hairdresser, I was about 13, 14, and there was a competition called, I think it was the, um, the Gold Cup Olympic hairdressing or something like that. And the, it was televised on BBC Two for some reason. And I saw it and I thought to myself, oh my God, that looks incredible. Uh, the, the, the guys there with their fancy, you know, fancy hairdos going on and um, the models, it just looked glamorous. It looked fantastic. So I knew straight away, that's the sort of thing I wanted to get into. I'm going to start my, my second section now, okay? Again, clamp over, give it a minute, warm it up, get it nice and tight, uh, nice and hot rather. Lift it up. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, I can see that, okay. mate, yeah. I'm going to one side. Yeah. And I go 360, and you can see it coming out here. Yeah. Okay? Then I'm going to just work down slightly just to make sure that root is nice. How do you stop someone burning the uh, scalp, Mark? I'm, I'm not touching the scalp. You're not, that's no? It. No, look, if I touch the scalp, that's touching the scalp. So I'm just right. off the scalp. What you Gosh. could do, what you could do, if you was a bit yeah. worried about burning the scalp, is you could get a comb, put it in, and sit it underneath. And that way, you're not going to ever touch the scalp. Gosh, it's your no. worries. So if you're, you know, if you're practicing, it's a good idea. But, you know, to be honest, I've done it so many times. Yeah. I'm myself more than anybody else. Yeah. So one second, I'm going to carry on with my story. But so now I'm coming out again. And this is where I'm talking about from here, coming to the other side. Gotcha. Coming to the other side, 360. Yeah. She is in the middle. See that in the middle? Yeah. So then I'm just going to work that down again. See it just slightly off the scalp. My fingers are on just to feel that heat come through. Once it's come through, I know I can move on. Yeah. So, like I said, I was about 13, 14, and I... I so what made you want to do hair at 13 or 14, Mark? I just told you, Lee. No, I know, but before you saw these guys, did you have any inclination that you wanted to do it before? Oh, then, or was it, no, no, they, no. The ones, they inspired you, did they? That inspired me, yeah. I saw this competition, the Gold Cup, Olympic Gold Cup competition, or something like that. You know, it was like, it was kind of like, oh, I don't know, 1980, 1980 or something like that it was. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to go back to the other side, turn it over and crack on, okay? Again, hold it down there, finger on, feeling the heat come through, and I'm going to carry on the same technique. So, yeah, um, so what I did, once I've seen that, the first thing I did is my dad had some handheld clippers and... Uh, I decided to cut my sister's hair and give her a bit of a flat top. Didn't go down too well. And I used these um, hand clippers, not electric, 
Oh my god! I know, I know. It wasn't a good thing, but you know, it was a are, start. They, are, they, are they easy to use them hand clippers? Well, I didn't know any different, so they literally just you just do that, you just do that. Where are we? Just do that, and they just they just cut. Mm. I mean, there was no guards. I was just holding the hair and music. <laughs> but listen, at the end of the day, it was terrible. But it was my start. Yeah. But then the other thing I did was I thought, you know what? I'm going to bleach my hair. And I had very black hair as a kid. And as far as I knew at the time, you know, bleach is bleach. So out comes the Domestos from the bathroom. <laughs> I ended up like a Belisha beacon, bright orange. I went to school. I got suspended. And then my mum took me to the barbers and shaved the whole lot off. And then, so that was basically how I, I, that was my first bit of hairdressing. It wasn't particularly good, but straight away I knew it's what I wanted to do. You got the bug. I got the bug. So basically I, um, I went and got a little, uh, uh, a job in a hairdresser. It's a little old granny shop, if, if you can still say that now. And um, I did some hair washing, sweeping up, making tea, all that sort of stuff like you do, you know. And, um, and then moved on. And when I finally left school, I went to the local hairdressers that were the biggest hairdressers in Essex at the time, actually. They were called Jeeves. And um, the owner, Mike Lewis, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. He, uh, he obviously saw some potential. He took me on. And uh, the rest is history. So Jamie Lee says, do you prefer vintage style hair more than regular hairstyling? Not really, no. I, I think I like it all. I like everything. You know, anything that's thrown at me, any kind of challenge, I'm, um, I'm up for it, you know. What do uh, you particularly like about being styling, Omar? Okay, well, one, very early in my career, uh, one of my ladies, uh, sorry, one of my tutors, she was very, very old school. And you know what? I used to not hate her, but I used to get the up with her because she would make, make you do finger waves, make you do pin curls, make you do putting rollers in and sets and stuff like that. To me, it was the 80s. I wanted to be doing shaving it off and dyeing it orange and, and all the sort of crazy sort of um, new romantic stuff. But she wasn't having it. You know, at the end of the day, I had to do what I was told. And do you know what? I'm so glad that woman made me do what she did because the skills that I have as far as long hairdressing goes, I would never have got anywhere else. She taught mm. me some really old fashioned stuff. And what the great thing about that is, I've worked in some theatres, local theatres, nothing big. But the reason I, I got asked is because I was known for getting vintage hairdos. So, you know, if, if, if someone wanted a, a real sort of 20s, 30s, 40s look, I was the guy to come to in the early days because I, it was, you know, it was drummed into me. And um, you was probably one of the few people that could do it where you come that, from. That's right, exactly. So it was kind of like, I think it's a great thing to have, especially if, I mean, I, I didn't ever go into um, the TV and the, and the, and the theatre sort of hairdressing. But if anybody does, things like this are priceless because if you can do, let's just say, Downton Abbey, you know, if you're a hairdresser working on Downton Abbey, let's say, and you can do all the stuff, you're going to go far. If you can't do it, you're not going to get the job. No, well, you need to even do that stuff now if you're in the session world or the celebrity world because, exactly. you know, everyone's having that kind of vibe. I mean, Lisa's saying and you'll probably, probably be able to give her a few more tips once you get onto the finger waving, but Lisa says she always struggles with the finger wave. So... Do you have any tips to make it easier? Well, it's basically, it's, it's, I suppose, it's just practice. It's practice. It's using your fingers, you know, your dexterity. It's, one thing we have got is dexterity. We use these. These are our tool. And the more you practice, the easier anything becomes. Riding a bike, taking stabilizers off, passing your driving test. It's like anything. Practice, practice, practice. It's really important. I mean, as I'm doing it, I shall show you how I'm doing it and how I'm pushing it into shape and how I'm clamping it. But I think it's just practice and 
Sometimes you might have to walk away and come back and practice again. You know, if it doesn't go right the first time. So try well, to... just a little recap. What you're what you're doing here is the classic vintage tong that you do. We do on the Lee Stafford Education vintage tong exactly. recipe. Yes, it's exactly the same technique. And what I wanted to do is demonstrate how you can use the same technique to get a different look. Okay. And so this look is going yeah. to be for like a decade earlier. So the, the, the original uh, vintage tong recipe that we do is based on the 1940s. This is based on the 1930s. So again, it's, it's, it's using a technique that's been around for 100 years or so to try and get a vintage look done in a vintage way. Obviously today I'm going to be doing it slightly different because I don't want it to be too vintage. I want to have a little modern twist. That's, you know, all of Lee's uh, recipes have got a modern twist to them. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it really. And, and, and Lisa, uh, no, sorry, Laura asks, what's the hardest hairstyle you've ever done? The hardest hairstyle? Well, do you know what? It's a, it's a tough one, the hardest hairstyle. I think it's more like techniques. You know, when you're learning your techniques, just to get a clean one length, it's quite difficult. You know, it takes a lot of practice of getting you it right. A haircut, Mark. You mean a haircut? Yeah, a haircut, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what you asked, wasn't it? Well, she's saying, Laura's saying, what's the hardest hairstyle you've ever done? But you're saying that any hairstyle to do well is hard. Well, yeah, I mean, if you don't know what, how to do it, it's going to be difficult until you've learned to do something. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like the same as, as, as the, um, your recipes, you know, you, you get a big 10 yeah. and you smash it out of the park. It's about practice. It's about getting it right. It's be, about being consistent. And then it's about doing your own interpretation. Yeah, these are all good questions, guys. Keep them coming. This leads on very nice from Laura. She says, Captain Martin, yes. what aspect of hairdressing did you find the hardest during your training and how did you overcome it? Um, I think, well, I think to be honest with you, I was a natural when it came to um, long hair work. I was also very much into avant-garde work. You know, I, I, I say I'm quite a creative person and I like to think out of the box. I like to experiment, I like to play. But I'd say I struggled with hair cutting in the beginning. And the reason why is because when I was learning, there was always a top stylist in the salon. And he would not share what he was doing. So you could stand behind and watch your stylist. So you're learning. But you don't know why you're learning. You don't know what you're learning. You're just you see. A, let's say that he's doing a graduated bob. Well, then if I copy everything that man did, I can do a graduated bob. But I don't understand how I've got there. I don't understand why he's doing that. So it was really difficult in the beginning. I would say, and I'll be honest with you, I would say it took me probably ten years before I understood why I was pulling it at that angle, why I was cutting it at this angle, and what happens when gravity takes over and it lands down there. All I was doing was mimicking. I know if I do what he did, I will get that shape. I don't know what it is, I don't know why it is or how it is. So I'd say it took me a long term, a long time to understand cutting techniques because I had no one explaining it. It was just, I was watching, learning, watching, learning, mimicking, copying, and, and doing it, you know, I was getting there, but I didn't mm. understand it for a long time. So I'd say that's probably the hardest thing for me was understanding haircutting techniques, to be honest. Mm. So you found heart, you found haircutting more of a struggle than dressing? Yeah, I think so, because, it, again, hairdressing was something that was drummed into me very, very early and for a long time. Yeah. And, again, I'm grateful for I'm very grateful for I really am. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. So our, our competition this week, and um, and I've already sent off. We've had three competitions so far, and Chichester have won every single one. And I think that you've all received your products by now. I hope that you're all enjoying them. 
uh, please let me know if um, if you have received them and you uh, and and how you're getting on with them. But the competition question this week for a goodie box of Lee Stafford products is this: What year did me and Martin, Captain Martin Holmes, <laughs> start working together? What year did we start working together for a goodie box? of Lee Stafford products. Uh, Amber's got a question here for you, Mark. She says, um, what's your favorite way of curling someone's hair? What's my favorite way of curling someone's hair? Like if you had what? someone sitting in your chair that wanted some curls, what would be your ideal technique? I've got to be honest. I think, again, depending on the type of curl I wanted, would depend yeah. on the, whether I use a straight straightening iron, whether I used yeah. a conical wand, whether I used a great big long ordinary tongue, or whether I was to set it, whether I was to use it, there's so many, it all depends on, on the final result. You know, if I want an afro, I'd use perm rollers or something like that. I would, mm. I mean, one of my favorite techniques is a foil set. I love the old fashioned foil set. It's something that we've been doing for many, many years. And it does give an amazing texture. Is that the one that Turner used to used to love? Yes, it? yes. <laughs> I remember that one. It's a brilliant technique. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's my favourite. For... Did you do that technique for that shoot that we did back in the day? Yeah, and I did. I did that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, the good old days. Yeah, so I'd say you know a foil set is really good fun. It's quite avant-garde. You get a lovely texture, depending on how, how big your foils are. You know, it could be a really tight afro. It could be a looser afro, but it is going to be an afro. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say depending on what I, I wanted, I'd, it depends on what I go for. But, yeah, my favourite, mm. I'm thinking about it now, would be a foil set. I quite, I quite enjoy doing that. It's quite therapeutic, yeah. and it gives a fantastic... Um, Fantastic uh, result, and it also it looks pretty good while you're doing it. It's quite yeah, it does. It does. It does it does look good. Someone do it, you know. Yeah, I'm going to give away another uh, goodie box of product this week. So it's two oh. goodie boxes, um, and um, the second prize, the first prize, is what year did me and Martin start working together? Uh, but the second prize is going to be for the question that we think is the best one. And we won't announce that um, at the end of this presentation, like we will do the year that me and Martin started working together. We'll notice this. Uh, we'll we'll um, announce this on our stories on Lee Stafford Education. So uh, please all, if you haven't follow, if you if you're not following Lee Stafford uh, Education Instagram at the moment, please follow because we'll announce that. Um, later on today for the best question and me and Martin will go through all the questions later and we'll um, we'll decide which question we think is the best. Fantastic. Uh, Tracy says thank you I received my box of goodies today that's lovely to hear Tracy. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> lovely all those parties to go to. That's it. Hopefully. Yeah, well, unless COVID stops us all. Well, it's been a tough couple of years, hasn't it, mate? It really has. It really has. Tough for the students as well because, oh. you know, yeah. they're all trying to learn at home and, you know, not going into the college as much. It's challenging. It is. Yeah, yes, indeed. But, you know, if you get yourself a nice model head, you've got plenty of time to practice at home. Well, that is it. That is it. I mean, That's really, you know, what, what, back in our day, Mark, you had to go up to, um, What's that? to, go up to back, at, you know, back in our day, you know, when there wasn't the internet around, you had to go to London to learn. That's you right. Know, you had to stay out of your life, you had to spend money, you know. Yeah, we, I used, mean, to, we used to do it a lot, didn't we? We used to do it all the time. But now, yeah. I mean, you can learn in the comfort of your own home. I mean, look what we're doing now, you know. Um so really, anyone that is driven and wants to succeed, really, there is no excuse, no matter where you are in the country, as long as you can get ahead like you've got there, 
um, and some equipment, you can just practice all day, can't you? Exactly, yes, all you need, yeah. You know, it's the old saying, isn't it? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I mean, that, that's probably a million years old, that saying, you know. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah, sure. If at it first is. you don't succeed, do try again and try again and keep trying because at some point it will click. Like I said, with, with when I was learning to cut hair, it took me 10 years before the penny actually dropped. I could yeah. cut hair and I could do lots of things, but I didn't understand the sort of mm. physics and the mathematics. Because when you think about it, we are all mathematicists, aren't we? Oh, we, have to, we have to know the angle, there's your maths. You have to cut at an angle, there's your maths. You let go, gravity takes over, bang, there's your physics. So we are all mathematicists. So, yeah. you know, that's pretty clever. I like that. I like that. <laughs> It is. Jamie Lynn says, what's the perfect finger wave, Mark? What's the perfect finger wave? What is the perfect finger wave? I mean, we're going to see you do some finger waves in a minute, aren't we? But yeah, what I is mean, there any particular finger wave that you look at and think, yeah? I think, you know, if it's nice and crisp and clean, for me, I like to see it perfectly clean and sharp because that's how it was done in the old days. Don't get me wrong, today is, is a bit of a mix-up of, uh, of, um, of techniques. But really, that old-fashioned technique where it's like crisp, clean, you can see every trough and every crest and every trough. And, it, and then a light shines off it and bounces. It just For me, it's got to be clean um, and beautiful. If that makes sense. Yeah. And how long did it take you before you did a clean and beautiful finger wave? Oh, ages. Ages and ages and ages. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd say probably within a year. I'd say within a year. It's very hard to say because it was a long time ago. You know, it was, it was early 80s and it was being drummed into me. So it was something I wasn't enjoying at the time. So it's not one of those things I'm like, the, I didn't have a eureka moment of that. Uh, until much later, I think, uh, because once I'd passed my sort of hairdressing, I didn't really need finger waves. No one was asking for finger waves in the 80s, and, mm. you know, it wasn't much going on. So I didn't really use it. And then, again, one day I had to use it, so I had to go back to it, and I, it was like riding a bike I never forgot, and it was still mm. there. And mm. people around me were impressed that I could do this thing when others around me couldn't. Yeah. And, and it isn't that difficult once you know how. It's like anything. It's only yeah. learning, practicing, and you know, you're gonna get it wrong a few times. You're gonna get it wrong a lot of times. It's just one of those mm. things. You know, I hope I'll get it right today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pressure's on, mate. The, the pressure's, pressure's on. on, yeah. So I'm coming up to my last section. I'm just clamp, um, wiggling my clamp. That helps to pull the hair through. As soon as you hear it click, you know the hair's gone through because there's no hair in between the uh, the trigger and the, and the tongue itself. And once I've done that, I'm just going to hold it on the root again just to make sure it gets nice and hot around there. There it comes. Sorry if I'm in the way. Again, don't rush this. At the end of the day, take as long as you need. One thing I will say is that I've found over the years showing people this is when they get to this sort of stage, they can't pull their clamp because right now it's not going anywhere. And that's because it's too much tension. You need to relax a little bit. It's not about pulling it. It's about letting the clamp do its job. So if you're pulling like this, you can't move it. If you just relax a little bit, you can see it moving. Yeah. But it's really important. People get to this stage, like, I can't get it through that last bit. Well, just relax. But like Laura says, she says, how hot are those tongs? It seems to be a long time that the heat is on the hair. Uh, I've got to be honest, I don't know how hot they are. I would say they're probably around about 180, something like that. Well, uh, they have to... How long you leave it on the hair for, Mark? How long am I leaving it on the hair for? No, so does it matter how long you leave it on the hair? Um, well, like I say, 
with preparation, I've used products that are heat protective as well as, you know, volumizing or, or, or what have mm. you. So, yeah, preparation is important. Using products that are heat protective is really important. Um, and also, if you think about what I'm doing, when I'm clamping, the hair is work. The hair is working its way around. So, it, you know, it's the, the bit that's touching the tongue is the newest bit all the time. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, so it's only that tail that's really touching the tongue because as it goes around, it's piling up on itself. So it's keeping it warm, but it's not directly on the tongue. So it's only that, that tail as it goes in, everything else is just wrapping around. Gotcha. Does that make got, sense? does make sense. We've got a great question here from Bob, uh, who's one of our trainers. Our I know trainer. who that is. Hello, no sir. Bonnies. You know who Bob is. Nice uh, to see what, you, yeah. He says, what kind of mindset or core skills would you need to stay in the hairdressing industry for students? And why would you recommend to them that they stay in hairdressing instead of other professions? Quite a big question, that one, isn't it? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that is a good question. I mean, I think everybody's going to have a different answer, you know, it's, it's for me, it's a passion. For me, it's an art form. For me, it's, it's pleasure. I never thought about money. You know, it was never about, oh, I'm going to do this job because of money. I did this job out of passion. If it was to do with money, I was on £12 a week. That's not earning much. So it wasn't about money. It was about passion. It was about learning. It was about my craft and my art and wanting to be good. But by doing that, the money seems to follow you later on and you end up mm -hmm. earning very well. So yeah. I think, first of all, is don't chase money. Chase a dream, and the dream is to become good at something. So mm -hmm. hairdressing was my particular uh, dream, and I like to think I've tried, I'm still trying to get good at it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, it's a, I think that's a very difficult question because everyone's got to have a different answer. I mean, I would say this is the best, this is as close as getting to a rock and roll star as I'm ever going to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if you're lucky enough to work with wonderful people, to be on stage, to show off your work, to do photo shoots, to get to do TV work. You know, I can't think of anything better than maybe being mm. Oasis. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Okay, so guys, we've got our... Uh, vintage tongs, vintage tongs set, all the way through the middle, all the way through the top, to the top of the head, okay? Now, this is really, really important that you let this cool down. These have got to cool down. It's really, really important. Um, if you think of it like a, uh, a plastic spoon, you put a plastic spoon in boiling water, it's going to just be, you know, malleable, bendable. You bend it, let it cool down, it's going to stay there. It's the same principle. You're heating it up, you're moulding it, it's cooling down, it's setting. It's the same sort of principles. It's very important to let that cool down, which will give me time to work on this bit here. So this bit here, we're going to work this into three sections, okay? And each section we're going to put into four stems, and we're going to do a four-stem braid or plait, whatever you want to call it. Now, the reason I'm doing four stems is because when I mould it around the back of the head, it's got more of a 3D appearance and it looks more like uh, it's been woven. And you'll see that as I do it. So, first of all, I need to get a, a band. So, I need to band that, okay? So, bear with me. So, I'll just put that there. Right. So, my first, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah? So I'm going to take this into three sections. So that's one. I just want to make sure that's one, two, three. Yeah, that'll do, I think. Okay, so section number one. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Section number one, I'm going to put that into four stems, okay? So that's one, two, roughly the same. You know, if they're not the same, it doesn't matter. 
you know, try and get them as, as, as samey as you can, but if they're slightly fatter or thinner, it doesn't matter. Could you well, turn that head round the other way, Mark? Is it possible that you could come from the other side? Well, this way? Yeah, a little bit like that, just so we can see. That's it, just so we can see. Is that that's, better? That's better, mate. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so there's my four stems, okay? One, two, three, four. And arms the in the way a little bit. Arms in the way a little bit. If you could, that's it, mate. <laughs> okay, I'll try. So the, the, the sequence is this, okay? Always start with your one off the outside. So I'm going to start on my left outside. Yeah. yeah outside number one is going to go over. Yeah. Under and over. Okay? So it's now become the outside of that, that side. Yeah. And the outside of this side is number two stem. Okay, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And then the outside goes over. Under. Under. And over. Okay? Yeah. And again. Same yeah. outside, over, under, over. Okay? Again. Over. Under. Over. What is this braid called, Mark? It's called a four-stem braid. Four-stem braid. Over, under, over. Back to the start. Over, under, over. Back to the start. Can you see what? Can you see? Yeah. Again. Hang on. Oh, I just got a plastic there. Over, under, under. over. So you've always got four stems, outside edge, always, over, under. Just losing your hands a little bit there, but we've seen it from the okay. top. Again, over, can you see? Yeah, yeah. Over, yeah. under, yeah. over. And you keep doing that until you get to the end, and then band it, okay? That's, that's, the, that's basically what gotcha. you're doing so far. So over, under, over. Again. Over, under, over. I'm going to keep doing that until I run out. I'm just going to go on the other side because I need to get my band. Okay. There it is. Right. So again, just nearly finish this one. Over, under, over. Okay. So again, last little bit. Over, under, over. Now, I'm going to leave quite a big end because yeah. I'm going to pull this out and fatten it up. So yeah. I need enough hair to be able to pull. So I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to put this band on. Okay. Nice and simple. Just one, two, three, four, five should do it. Okay. So that's your first one done. Now, you can see it's got more of a 3D of effect because this is sitting mm. out if you did a, a three uh stem braid it'll be flatter you can still use it but i just yeah. feel that this once you pull this out it gives it a more 3d effect it's more fatter it's it, i just think it looks better it looks more um woven or like a basket weave than a, a three stem so again next one so we've got, like I say, we're going to have three of these, okay? Yeah. So there's that one. Maybe I'll just lift her up a bit, shall I? Yeah, sounds good. So Bond's yeah. just asked, he said, that was a great question, Martin, about um, you know, why people should stay in here. And I'm just going to give you a quick, my view on it, which is very, very similar to Martin's. I mean, you know, I, I, I was lucky, like Martin was, that I found something that I was incredibly passionate about and, you know, it never really felt like work. It was my hobby, you know, and, um, yeah. and um, you know, when you find something that you love, it's so easy to put your heart and soul into it and, and excel in it. And, and I know, guys, that when you're learning, it's a very, very frustrating time because, like Martin said, it took him 10 years before he actually liked what he was doing, and it was very similar for me. No, 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 no. Not, not liked, understood. Well, it took me about 10 years before I liked anything. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, I, I, I was. I, I, it never came easy to me. I wasn't a natural like you was with long hair. Right, right. A hell of a long time. And it can be very, very frustrating. 
Uh, I know it can when you're learning, but you know, you're you're in work for a very, very long time in your life. You guys that are 16, 17, you're gonna be in a job for 60 years. And you want to do something that you love, that you're passionate about, that you know gets you excited. And and um, and I know I've been in the business now for what is it, forty years, you know. And I'm still buzzing. I mean, look, I'm sitting here every week doing these master classes, and you know, watching the guys do hair, and and I'm still loving it. So um, you know, they say that hairdressing is the happiest profession you can possibly be in out of all the million professions in the world. I mean, if that's not enough. I don't know what is, but these days with hair, if you get good at it and it's and it's like anything, any profession you go into, if you want to get the rewards, if you want to get the pot of gold at the end of the table, you have to be good. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You have to get good. It, it, it goes without saying. But, you know, in hairdressing, what I find is, and you heard it here, is that, you know, it's one of them industries where I, I've, in my experience, there's not that many driven people. So if you're driven and you get your head down and you get really good, you can rise high. And the opportunities these days are just endless. I mean, some of the staffs are, are becoming YouTube stars. And, you know, I know other friends of mine that are traveling the world doing celebrities and product. I mean, you know, the world's your oyster now. You, you know, in this world of entrepreneurism, you know, you can do anything, you know. So I would say to you, the characteristics of, you know, getting good is, you know, is determination, consistency, practice, like Martin said. And if you could do all them things, you know, there will be lots of, um, there'll be lots of rewards for you guys. You know what I mean? But it just, it, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Well said, Lee. That, that was fantastic. Well done. <laughs> No, I, I really enjoyed that. That's brilliant. And it's so true. You're right. Okay, can I just add one thing? Yeah. Because um, you're right. It was a survey, wasn't there, that um, the happiest people in the workplace are hairdressers. That's right. But there's also another survey of the happiest place to live in the UK. Yeah. And that was Where's Leon. That? Really? Oh, mate, you are living. You're lucky am I. <laughs> you are living in the happiest place doing the happiest job. No wonder you've got a smile on your face, mate. <laughs> mate. Well, so, guys, if you haven't got the luxury of living in Leon C, you can actually do a job that makes you... And let's face it, you know, what with all this mental health, you know, these days, it's so important to do something that makes you happy and feels content. And I think that there's lots of reasons why our business makes you feel like that. And I think one of the big reasons is... You know, you're working on a different person every hour and you're making them feel great, which makes you feel great. And you're building wonderful relationships with them people. And the craft is so fulfilling when you get it right. I mean, it, it is, a, it is yeah, for someone that's been in the business for 40 years and who knows a hell of a lot of hairdressers out there. You know, you very rarely meet anyone that isn't really, you know, buzzing on what they do. Yeah. Yeah, I must admit, you know, I don't think I ever wake up and think, oh, no, I've got to go to work, ever. I don't think I've ever felt like that. No. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if I did, I'd have to give up. Exactly. You know what I mean? You guys, they still haven't got anywhere near the year that me and you first started working together. I'm what? going to give you a little clue, guys, right? It's below 2000. Oh, right. 2011, 2015, <laughs> 2009. Well, what I can say to that is they must think we're ever so young. <laughs> it's before the year 2000. There's a little clue for you. Yeah. It's been a while, hasn't it, mate? It's been it's a long been a, time. It's been a while, mate. It's been a while. And I've got to be honest, I, I, I'll have to say this. I mean, my time working with you... I think I learned the the most that I had learned in my hairdressing career. Well, I you think know? we were all on a bit of a crusade together, wasn't we? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. I mean, we had so much fun, didn't we? Oh, it was amazing. Learning was amazing. so much fun. It wasn't a chore. It really wasn't. And I think that's the big secret as well, guys, is that 
you know, when you are looking for somewhere to work, work in an environment that is going to um, is going to excite you, it's going to inspire you, it's going to educate you. Because if you go and work in a place where it's all a bit dull, then you know you, you, you you're just not going to get the most out of it. You know, no. I mean, we were very lucky that we was all working together, and um, and it was a really fun environment. You know, and we was all really ambitious about getting good at doing hair you know so yeah. i mean I, I remember summer days mate where we'd be working till midnight exactly just to, just to make you know just because we could and we wanted to exactly you know, yeah it's crazy wasn't it i mean it that was. i would say they were some of the best days of my career life and me, and me they were great so is that the same is that the same uh you've done the same um uh, braid on all three of them, Mark. So yeah, all three of these have got a, a, is a four stem uh, braid or plait. Like I said, you can see it gives it a bit of a three D effect. It's not so flat. It's almost it's almost box shape, you know. But I'm going to pull these out and 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 work them in a, a low chignon, but not yet because these must be cooled down now. Um, I'm going to do this is the last thing I'm going to play with. Okay, so that's done. We've got our vintage tong set. We've got our ponytail in three plaits, uh, four, three four stem plaits. The next thing is going to be putting our finger waves in. Now, it's very important. If you want to do it properly, you've got to use the things. I mean, these, these have been designed. Well, they haven't changed in 100 years, so they must work. Um, yeah. These are finger wave clips. They're not good for anything else apart from clamping finger waves. And I'll show you how we're going to use them in a minute. So I'm going to come around to the other side. I'm going to get a bit of hairspray. This one. Just want to make sure you can see. So I might just do. Is that better? That's good. Okay. So they've cooled down nicely, haven't they? Yeah. So I'm going to take out these clips. One, two, three, five, six, seven. They go away. Now, this is where some people start to panic because you've got to brush this out completely now. If you don't brush it out completely, it's not going to happen. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I've put all that curl in, that nice curl. And I'm going to brush it all out. But yes, you have to. You have to brush it all together so it all starts working as one. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm literally going to pick them out. Like, can you can you see? All right, am I in the way? Yeah, no, it's good. Pick them all out like this, and then I'm going to start to brush nice and gently all the way through. And as I'm doing that, they're all starting to mould together. Some people think, oh, my God, all my curls are gone. But it's not about the curls. We're, try we're trying to put in some waves here. Okay, already you can see they're starting to fall just from a little bit of a, um, a brush. But we're going to carry on with that. We're going to brush them out a bit more. See, I'm putting on it. I'm really, like, working it, working it, working it from all different angles. I'm just going to bring my trolley a bit closer. I use a little bit of flexible hold hairspray. Again, just work that through. Let's have a look. It still needs a little bit of working. You see how it's still at the bottom here? It's not quite pulled together as it is here. So again, just going to work on it, work on it. Whoop. Butterfingers, work on it, work on it. So you're really giving that a good brush through, aren't you, Mark? Oh, yes. It's really important. You know, get everything consistent, all working together. See, I'm like pulling it straight, a bit of hair mm. but I know it's going to bend back. Okay. So I think I'm quite happy with that now. I'm now going to start working with the finger wave itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch for the natural wave that we've just created, which is starting up here, okay? 
I'm just going to tilt her slightly. Oh, that's better. Okay. So you want to create a C. So I'm, I was coming back and I'm creating a C shape, which is like this. And then the next C shape to it, which becomes an S shape. Okay. So you can't put an S shape in straight away. You have to start off with a couple of C's. Sounds a bit strange, but bear with me. I just need to brush this a little bit more of there. Okay, so we can see now that there is our first. So I'm keeping my finger on the top. I'm looking for the first bend. I'm pushing that bend up. I'm going to get my clamp and I'm going to clamp it. Okay, so that's my first one. Okay, so it's come that way in a C shape and down. And now it's got to come back. In another C shape, which will make an S shape. Okay, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, bit of hairspray, just hold that in. Okay, so our next one is going to come this way. So I need to hold it very gently. looking for this C shape which is there can you see that yeah so now this is where I need to stick my next clamp in okay so that clamp goes right on top of the crest and holds it in position okay now I'm back over here and now I'm getting a bit more gentle with my brush because I don't want to pull all that out now so I'm just being a bit more gentle, a little bit of spray to help control this. And I'm looking for my next, my next uh, C shape, which you can see it's happening. It's mm. starting to happen. I'm just tucking that out of the way. That one's in there. Again, hold that there. I'm just going to clamp that there. Okay. I think that's about right. Okay. I'm just tidying up some little ends. You're always going to get a few ends because obviously the hair is not one length, it's layered. And just to hold it in place a little bit tighter, I'm going to put a little silver clip just there, just to hold it out of the way. Okay, now this one, can you, sorry, this one here, I'm just going to pull this round here. And I'm going to use a little clamp for that, a, sm a little slightly smaller one. I'm going to clamp that in there. Okay, and this little tail, I'm just going to wrap it around there. Use a pin or a grip rather and just get it out of the way. Okay, so a little bit of spray again, a little bit of spray again, just, just fine tuning now. A little bit of spray there. I think that's enough. Okay, so there's some finger wave. I'm just going to put one of them there, just hold it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next, so you can see the finger waves come around like that, up like that, round there, up again, and then back. And I'll just tuck the end under here, out of the way. Mm. Okay, so now we need to cover this up with these. Nice and simple. We're going to start with, we'll start with one outside one. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to fatten it up. So I'm just, just using my fingers like I was, I don't know, kneading dough or something. I'm just gently, gently massaging it. I don't, don't want to pull it out too much. I'm just fattening up the, the, uh, the braid. Remember, we've got 
enough at the end here to be able to pull that back. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Yep. So now, can, you, can you overdo that, Martin? Well, you can overdo it, yes. You can overdo it and end up pulling it out. Um, mm. You know, it depends. I mean, I, I don't mind it being a little bit textured today. Um, yeah. So if it, I might I might just do it a little bit overdo it. Um, if I want to keep it very, very clean, then I wouldn't overdo it, no. You can overdo it. Of course you can. It's like anything. You can overdo anything. But just keep an eye on it. Just gently, gently manipulate it, spreading it out in your fingers until you're happy with what you've got, which is quite, it's quite a nice plat going on. Now, hair grips. Nice blonde hair grips. I'm just going to fold this in. And I'm going to put it around there. And I'm going to just pin that in there. I'm going to pin that. Can't get it. There we go. I'm going to pin that in there. Okay. So that's that bit out of the way. The second one, same again. Pull that out. Just. Widen it up a little bit. I know we're running out of over time, aren't we? I'm just going to speed up a little bit. Okay, a little bit of spray. A couple more grips. And again, it's going to fold that in, fold that up, push it in like this. Again, through that side there. Okay, put another one on this side here. So that's the two edges in. And tighten this up this side. Like that. And then the third one. Again, open it up. Spread it out a bit, fatten it up. Hang on, that was just, oh, that pin's no good. Got to get another pin, guys, excuse me. Got it. Just gonna put that one back in there. Like so. That's it. Okay, and then we've got our third one. So I'm just gonna, again, just fold that away. Bring that up over the top. And this is what they call a chignon, a low chignon. Uh, it's a French word. I think it means bung or don't know what it really means, chignon. I think it means low, a low bung, I think. Any ideas, Lee? <laughs> no, but do you know what? I know it's a French word for some kind of hair up, isn't it? Yeah, but it's actually very low. A shingon is very low. So it's quite a low, I think it means like low bum. So yeah. guys, the winner of the first competition is um, Jamie Lee Curtis with 19, <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, 1991 was the year me and Martin started working together. That's 30 years ago. Um, Jamie Lee, if you could let your trainer know to send me a little email and let me know where I'm going to send the products to, you will get some products before Christmas. Well done. Congratulations. Anyone, anyone wants to know, what's your greatest achievement, Martin? Becoming a granddad. There you go. There you go. That was my greatest achievement. I became a... Oh, hang on. So I'm going to be taking... Sorry, I'm going to... So before I tell you about that... That looks there's, lovely. There's the little chignon, okay, at the back. So it's nice and clean on one side with that low chignon there, okay? 
push that back in. Um, and now I'm going to take these out, and then it, you'll we'll see the waves going into the chignon. Okay. Yeah, becoming a granddad. That has been definitely my, my greatest achievement. I mean, before that was becoming a dad. Um, but if you're talking about hairdressing, well, I mean, I was very lucky to get to the British, to get to the finals of the British Hairdressing Awards back in the 90s. You know, that was that was fantastic. What an achievement that was. I was very lucky to um, to win the Alternative Hair Show Award, the Visionary Award, for two years in a row. I was very lucky with that. Um, and then I'd say, to be honest with you, I was in the right place at the right time for, be, for getting the television show. I mean, yeah. I, I've been very, very lucky. But then again, I think at the same time, you know, you make your own luck, don't you? Mm. I mean, luck... Sorry, I'm in the way. Luck has got a lot to do with a lot of things. But I do believe that you make your own luck. I really do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's a few things in my career that, are, that, have, that have been amazing. Um, working with Lee was one of them. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> no, I do mean that, though. It's true. You know, you, you've always been an inspiration to me from the beginning. Oh, it's very kind of you to say, Mark. So that's that... Looking that's looking lovely. Look at that. It looks beautiful. That's the uh, 1930s inspired wow. hair art. But Looks amazing. Mind. What do you think, guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, hearts. What do you think? Show Martin a bit of love if you like it, if you love it. Let us know what you think of that. I mean, it's it's again, it's very, very simple, but done very effectively, isn't it? Looks very, very nice. And then yeah, can see, I can't tell if you can see that or not. Can you see it all right? Yeah, you can. Them finger waves are absolutely bang on. Jamie Lee Curtis, there's a big heart there. Alex, oh, says, Alex says it's gorgeous. Um, so beautiful from Laura. Uh, looks absolutely fabulous. Alex, Bon, has given us a, a heart. Bon said it looks amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all the questions today. I know we run a little bit over, but um, thank yeah, you. Sorry about that. That's all right, mate. It was well worth it. Well worth it. Uh, it's, only seven, it's only seven minutes over, so it was absolutely brilliant, mate. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, we will be back next week. Um, if you uh, wasn't able to see this live and you're watching it at a later date, well, all power to you for watching it at a later date all power for you for watching this video i mean there's plenty of places you could be right now so being here watching some education really is a reflection on your attitude and that kind of attitude guys is definitely going to take you in the right direction bond says well done grandpa uh <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much bond yeah. and thank all you right. all for tuning in i really appreciate it yeah have a wonderful week everybody and we shall see you next Monday. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.